Einstein came up with the theory of relativity. Charles Darwin has the origin of species. And I made these stairs. My accomplishment may not be on the same level as these other two, but to me, it's a pretty big deal. Stick around and I'll show you how I made the stairs. Our access to the loft started as a wooden ladder. You know the type, roughly 90 degrees straight up to the loft. The kind you need two hands to climb up is a pretty dangerous way to access the loft. So a couple of years ago, I made this ladder stair hybrid. It's not quite as steep as the ladder, but not quite a set of stairs either. It made accessing the loft a little better and allowed us to carry some smaller items up to the loft. But you still need to hold on with at least one hand. So carrying anything up with two hands was not a safe option. Now that I have the shop built, I wanted to move the ladder stair out of here and take the time to build an actual set of stairs. The kind that you can go up and down without using your hands. Having proper stairs will make the loft a more useful space. Moving larger things up to the loft will be much easier if we can just carry it up a set of stairs. Building the stairs will also clear up some more space in the shop. My wife's been pretty eager to start bringing the Christmas decorations down from the loft. With the old ladder stairs, that was quite a chore. So I wanted to get these stairs built so she can fulfill her decoration inclination. The stairs are going on the cold side of the barn, and the only place on that side that can accommodate stairs is right here. Anywhere else is either in the way or doesn't have sufficient head clearance up in the loft. And I'm fairly tall, so I like head clearance. It's time to build. The first thing I need to do is build a support wall, since I'm going to be cutting a 9 foot by 3 foot hole in the floor above. So as I've done for all the other walls that I've added to the barn, I start by wrapping the bottom plate in plastic to help prevent it from wicking moisture up from the concrete. This barn still has pretty high humidity, and I think that if I left bare wood on the concrete, it would only be a few years before it started to rot away. Once I have my bottom plate ready, I attach my top plate to the joists above and make sure everything is plumb. Now I just add the studs. Out of habit, I made the studs 16 inches apart when measured from the center. And I started the measurements from the wall and worked out to the end. Only later did I realize my error. I should have made sure that the studs lined up with the joists above. I think this will be fine the way it is. The floor above isn't holding much weight. No one will be walking on it. But I'm gonna fix this anyway, just to be sure. But that won't be done for this video. Later, I'll go back and one at a time, add a new stud under the joist, and then remove the old one, and then rinse and repeat until they're all done. Since this wall is load bearing, I'm gonna anchor it to the concrete floor. And for that, I need a way to sink some sort of fastener into the concrete. I chose the Ramset powder actuated nailer. Well, that was fun, and now my bottom plate is secure to the floor. I just need to add some blocking, and the wall will be done. Now it's time to knock out the new hole in the floor above. The loft floor is, strangely, made from particle board. Not the best choice for an uninsulated building. Down the center of the loft floor, where people can walk, there are some half-inch planks laid on top of the MDF. Without those, you wouldn't want to walk around up there. The MDF floor is pretty rotten in many places. And once I removed the planks from my 9x3 area, I started to knock out the MDF. And now I need to clean it all up so I can cut out the joists. There, the joists are all cut out, and the barn hasn't collapsed yet, so that's looking pretty good. Now I'm ready to start cutting out the stringers. I used a site called blocklayer.com to do my calculations. I like this site because it gives a printable PDF with all your details once you settle on your measurements. I ended up going with 9.5 inch treads, and my rise ended up being 7 and 3 eighths of an inch. The standard tread is usually about 10 inches. That made the run of these stairs too long, 
since I don't want to block this area. Here's a quick lesson on how stairs work. And since I'm no expert, I won't pretend to know enough to teach others how this is done, but I can give you the basic terminology so that maybe you can follow along a little easier. The overall rise, that's the distance between the ground and the floor above. In my case, 118 and 3 8 inches. On a set of stairs, this is called the run, and this is called the rise. And the boards that you cut the runs and rises into are called the stringers. If you want to do all this math on your own, you can do that. But using an online calculator just makes it easier. The site I used allows you to play with the numbers a bit to get the stairs you want for your space. Now that I have my measurements all mapped out, I can start making the cuts into these 2x12s. I sat up outside for this since it was a nice day, a little chilly, but clear and dry. Something that I really found helpful about the stair plans from blocklayer.com was these measurements. These show you the points where the runs and rises meet, so when you're making your lines you can verify that everything's lining up correctly. So that's where I started, marking out the gaps between each step. Once that was done, I used a carpenter's square and clamped a piece of wood to the correct measurements so I can repeat my marks all the way down the board. When I got to the end, the measurements weren't lining up with my printout. Eventually I figured out that on the first stair, I used the square correctly. Then I ended up flipping it over, and that put the runs where the rises should be and the rises where the runs should be. So I had to flip the whole board over and start again. I really wanted to make sure I didn't mess up on cutting these stringers. With the prices of wood these days, I prefer not to have to buy any more boards. As I'm sure most of you know, wood prices have nearly doubled since this time last year. Each of these boards is about $45, so I don't want to have to buy any more. This time I got my marks all right, and I'm ready to start making my cuts. I use the skill saw for this. but I had to stop short on each cut. To complete the cuts, I used the Japanese pole saw. These saw horses I have are pretty wobbly, but it's all I had available. I thought I had them set up well enough, but apparently not. I'm gonna have to build some better saw horses really soon. Okay, now that I have all my cuts down on this board, I'll use it as a template to mark out the next two, and then cut them as well. With all three of those cut, I put them in their new home. For the treads, I'm going to use two 2x6s per tread, but two of them are just a little wider than I want them to be. So after I cut them to length, I rip them down to 5 inches on the table saw. Then attach them to the stringers. And now I'll do that 29 more times. And there we have it brand new set of stairs up to the loft. Now I just need to cover the hole in the floor where the old stairs were. With that done, the shop's fully insulated. The last step is to make it safe for the kids up in the loft. So I'm going to add a railing so no kids take a tumble down the steps. The budget is pretty much spent for this project. So I'm using whatever scrap 2x4s I can find. I did have one 2x4 left over, so I used that for the top rail. And instead of a bunch of balusters, I used some rope. I think it looks pretty decent, and I even reused one of the railings from the old stairs. The one with the rebar balusters. And that's all done. 
we can now move stuff up and down from the loft with relative ease, just in time to bring down the Christmas decorations. I hope you found the video helpful. If so, give it a like. And subscribe if you want to see more. And thanks for watching.